We have a new song to do today. It's called Worthy of Your Name. And it speaks of just who Jesus is and what he came and what he did and how through it all, he never sinned. Through it all, he kept his eyes on his Father in heaven. And for who he is, he is worthy of our praise. God has come to be with us. He didn't have to send his son, but he did because of his love. In and of himself, he is worthy of our praise. And so as we sing this new song, just reflect on the words that you might encounter this God, this Jesus that he sent, and that he might be found worthy.
Father. We come to you today, Father God. Praise your name. Because you are worthy. You are worthy of that name, Jesus. We thank you for your blood, Father God. That washes away our sin. That gives us healing, Lord Jesus. A heart to forgive and love. Father God, we praise you. We ask that you forgive us, Father God. We're not perfect, Lord Jesus, but we're made in your image. We make a choice to follow you in your path, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the blessed day that you have given us. Hallelujah. And for anything that I've missed in this prayer, Father God, touch it. Reach down and touch it, Father God, for whatever someone's going through, family, friends, Father God, finance, anything that's going wrong, Father God, reach out and touch them, Father God. I pray in Jesus' name that you Proclaim your power, Lord, Father God. There's no other words. You are worthy. You are worthy of your name, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Go ahead and greet your neighbor. Let's take a second to greet your neighbor. And once you're done, go ahead and be seated. Good morning, new song. How are we doing this morning? Let's try that again. How are we doing this morning? Woo, there it is. I'm glad you guys didn't float away this weekend. I thought about building the ark, but I didn't need to, thankfully. Can we get a little more warm weather? Just a little bit, please, please. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm Michael. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and we're so glad that you decided to come and join us for this time to celebrate the goodness of God together. This is our connect card time. So if you can reach into the seat back pocket in front of you, or if you're in the back row or the front row, it's underneath your chair, and pull out your connect card and wave it around a little bit. You know, we got to gotta dry off a little bit. It's a little, so yeah. Anyways, these are our connect cards. If uh, you're new, we ask that you fill it out its entirety so we can connect with you. We want to get you plugged in. We want to let you know what we have going on at the church um, and, and get you plugged into our family. Uh, we're in a series called Family Circus right now, and we realize that it is all about family, and we're all family here, and so we just want to welcome you in uh, and connect you uh, with us. If you're a regular attendee, just fill out your name and the service you are attending. This is the 1030 service, the middle service, woo -woo. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, if you could do that. And then on the back is my favorite part. On the back is our prayer requests and our praise reports. I love this because uh, I get to talk to God in this moment and write down my prayers that I am working through and that I believe that God will answer uh, because we serve a God who answers prayers, right? Amen. Amen. So we serve a God who answers prayers. And so just write down your prayer, uh, your prayer request because every Tuesday morning the staff fasts and prays for every single one of these cards. We have prayer teams that pray for them. We have just seen amazing things happen from restored marriages to healings to financial breakthrough to whatever it is because God loves to answer prayers and God hears us when we come to him with our needs. And so then after that, uh, when your prayers get answered, write down your praise reports because we also want to celebrate how good God is and how faithful he is to us all the time. And so uh, we'll have a few moments to do that. Video announcements will play, uh, but you can drop these in the offering baskets as they go by. If you need more time, we have black drop boxes at each of the exits that you can put your cards in. And then we also want to take our, our tithes and offerings and, and take some time to give back to what God has given us. So if you would join me in prayer as we pray for our tithes and offerings. Father God, we thank you for today. Thank you for just what a wonderful weekend it's been, God, as we've seen uh, your amazing works in the thunder and the lightning and the rain, God, and, and even the sun. God, we're so grateful for the blessing that comes with the rain, the blessing that comes with the sun, God, and the blessing that comes uh, when we just get to come and lay everything at your feet. And so today we just 
bring our tithes and our offerings to you. We lay them down at your feet and ask that you use them uh, to further your kingdom, God. We give back to you, and we give it all to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right, we are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Here are some video announcements once again. Welcome to church, everybody. Hi, it's Eric, the mailman. And this news to know is addressed to you. New Song's mission signature is connect, grow, serve, deploy. I just want to confirm that with you. Connect, grow, serve, deploy. Thank you. New Song has always felt called to serve our community, like through Project Service Connect. It's a one-stop shopping event sponsored by the Homeless Coalition of Bismarck. Drop off your donations in our orange bins today. This Wednesday, August 16th, over a thousand volunteers will spend the day on projects throughout the community on United Way's Day of Caring. The new song team will spend the day at the Salvation Army painting inside the building and working outdoors trimming up the grounds. Sign up today by going to the access booth or emailing mobileministries at newsongbismarck.com. Next Sunday, August 20th, we are welcoming back guest speaker Ben Dixon. He is a pastor, author, and a prophet from the Pacific Northwest and a dear friend to New Song. He'll be speaking to us at the first two services, and then for third service, he'll take the time to pray and prophesy over people. Talk about special delivery. Our featured ministry booth this Sunday is Celebrate Recovery. Beginning on Friday, September 8th, New Song will be launching this Christ-centered program that helps people overcome their hurts, habits, and hangups. We're also looking for someone to coordinate the child care program for these Friday evening meetings. So if you feel God is calling you into this ministry, please visit the table at the gathering place today. At this time, we ask that you please silence your cell phone, but feel free to like and share us on Facebook. If any of these announcements stuck out, treat it as priority mail. Go invite people personally, go to the access booth for more info, and go to the new song website for full list of upcoming opportunities. That's your news to know. Now go connect, serve, and grow. How's my delivery on that? Hey, New Song Church, this is Ben Dixon, and I'm looking forward to the upcoming family camp August 17th through the 19th. The last couple years, I've been able to be your guest speaker and be a part of the family camp, and I've seen God do great things as we've gathered together. And I want to personally invite you to be a part of this year's family camp, which our theme is they will know. The whole point is that people around us, including ourselves, will know that we've been with Jesus as a result of this weekend. So I want to invite you, register today. Be a part of this special time, whether you have a family or whether you're single, married or not. This really isn't about bringing families to this camp. It's about us becoming the family of God together. So register today. Be a part of this special time. Don't miss out. And I look forward to seeing you guys there at Family Camp 2017. Well, good morning, everybody. Great to see your smiling faces here. Um, if you want to grab your handout, we're going to continue our series, Family Circus. Before we do that, though, I want to address real quick yesterday's event in events in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, or Virginia. And, um, you know, that's something that when these type of things um, kind of raise their ugly head, it's something we can get, I don't know, helpless. We can feel helpless about and what are we going to do from Bismarck, North Dakota um, in relation to Charleston? Well, the beautiful thing is God has given us a way to impact things in the earth um, without having to physically be there. And it's through this thing called prayer. And so I just want to encourage you and challenge you. If you're here and you're watching those events occur and unfold yesterday and you get really frustrated and angry, the Bible says, be angry and not sin. The danger with an event like yesterday, the hatred that we saw portrayed is we can get sucked into the same hatred. And we can hate the people that are hating. And it makes us no different then. So we have to be careful that our emotions don't grip us in such a way that we end up exhibiting the same behavior they had. That's not Jesus. So how do we address this? It's real simple. 
through the power of prayer. There are spiritual principalities at work there causing all kinds of death, destruction, and hatred. And it's our job, since we're not there, if we were there, if, if you watched what happened yesterday, there was community leaders and pastors that went and locked arms without their weapons, without guns, as far as I know, and they stood in front of all these militia with M16s and body armor. This is something that we have to think through. If that was to happen in Bismarck, what would we do? Well, I'm telling you one thing we have to do. There, we, we focus at New Song a lot on prayer because it's imperative. We cannot afford to pray less. And if we have been duped to believing that prayer doesn't matter or that there's no power in it, then we won't do it. So a little come to Jesus moment for all of us. How many have said a prayer for what happened? Don't raise your hand. For what happened yesterday? Or did you get sucked in to the despair of the moment? This is a moment where we can reflect and we can say, no, 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 no. I have got to access this weapon and this tool called prayer. Matter of fact, Jesus commands us to do it. Because if we don't, the alternative is that hate will get in our own hearts. And that's not God's plan. There's a verse I've showed you the last couple weeks, and I want to show you again. <clears throat> in John 13, it says, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is, Jesus knew these events were going to take place. And that's why he commanded us to love. Because it's too easy to look at those situations and fall into the same trap. So with that said, will you guys just bow your heads with me and we're just going to pray for that, that area. God, we come to you and it can get very discouraging to watch something this heinous happen and think how in the world, but it doesn't really even matter. What matters is what we do with that what we've experienced and what you've empowered us with. So God, we as a church family come together in agreement and we target our prayers to Charleston and we pray that those spiritual principalities that are trying to set up there or that are set up, we tear them down in the name of Jesus and we say you have no authority there to wreak this havoc. We agree with all the churches that are praying across our nation and across our world and we pray that those spiritual principalities would be uprooted and they would be replaced with the power of your spirit and Jesus' kingdom, which is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. God, would you turn this thing around for your good, that that area will become a light and a beacon of the glory of God, that they will not get stuck or fall into the same trap that that hatred is trying to ingrain there. Pour out your spirit. Bring a miracle. Miracles, plural, through this. Break mindsets generationally. Manifest yourself in dreams and visions and in, in ways that only you can do. So God, we exercise our faith according to your word and we agree together. And everybody said, amen. amen. See, when we pray... We can, our hopelessness can turn to hope, and our helplessness can turn to the help that we need, which is our Father in heaven, the King of glory. So we're going to continue our series today, Family Circus, which is very fitting because I was talking to somebody earlier this morning about how do people do that? How do these people think in their mind that this is okay? For them to put sheets on their head and, and to drive cars into crowds. Unfortunately, one of the ways that this happens is because the family that they were raised in nurtured it. I had a friend who told me a story about when he was in Afghanistan and how an eight-year-old boy in a robe came walking towards his platoon. And he was on point. 
and he began to yell at this little boy, you have to stop. You have to stop. And this little boy is weeping, saying, I can't. I'm not allowed to. You have to stop, because if you don't, I'll have to shoot you. This little boy comes walking and walking, would not stop, and he had to shoot him and kill him. Why in the world would an eight-year-old boy do that? Tell you what, it's not because he's an eight-year-old boy. It's because somebody ingrained this hate in him. Family, this series on family is probably maybe one of the most important series we've ever done. Especially in our culture, where family are being ripped apart. And I don't know about you, but the devil loves to destroy families. Because it's at the very center of of what God's creation is. From the very beginning, God's plan was through family. So I'm going to show you, we're going to unpack today why family is important, but before I do, because we're, we're, it's Family Circus is the title, I want to show you a couple more cartoons from Family Circus. This first one is about Grandma and her old phone. It says, Grandma's phone is really old-fashioned. No movies, no music, no text messages, you just talk. How boring, right? <laughs> Now let's look at this next one. I thought this was hilarious. I can relate to this one. Daddy said we need to work as a team. That means you guys need to do what I say. <laughs> the older sister are talking there. And the dad's in the background going, what? But yes, we've all, if you're a parent, you've had those moments where it's like, I don't know how you got that. But families are ch a challenge, whether it's our blood family or whether it's a church family. Because we can try to ram home our plan, and we, that's not God's plan. God's plan is for us to work together and to care for one another. Whether it's our blood family, our church family, to care for one another, to nurture one another, and then to reach out and invite people into this family that don't have a family, that are out there struggling and out there alone and, and empty. And, and God has said to us, we get to play that part in hospitality to invite people into this incredible family called the church, Jesus' family. So we are... A, one of our, our target at New Song is a, to be a five-generation church, which means we believe in children have unbelievable value, youth have unbelievable value, adults, young adult, our young adults, adults, and senior adults. All five of those generations to God have extremely high value. So we want to consciously figure out how to minister to all five generations. That's why we have kids ministry and youth ministry and and. And I like that we have kids ministry and youth ministry because they can deal with things at their age appropriate level. But I, what I like even more is when we're all together. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to show a video from our water baptism Sunday. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. But it was so beautiful because you could see all five generations, not kids over there and youth over there and adults over here. It was everybody was just together. And they were hanging out and it was so natural. And that's how it's supposed to be. And if you were with us, a couple of weeks ago, we went and did church in the ballpark, and I want to show you some pictures from that, and I want you to pick out the five generations in these pictures. Let's take a look at these. So here, now just watch. You can see the gray hair, see the young adult, the adult, the kid. Let's keep going here. If you look at these pictures, you'll see every age represented. Let's keep going. Oh, this is Caitlin and Dwight. Caitlin, Caitlin did the on-field games for the kids. If you were there, you know that this is the picture of those. It was so fun. They did just a great job. She's just a sweetheart, and the kids just had a blast. Let's keep clicking through here. Some other group shots. And there's the worship band, again, age diverse there. And there's DeAndre. He's going to be getting up here in a minute to share a little bit of his story. And I think we got one more. This is the coach of the Larks and three of the players and the chaplains. And, and so we, we, we want to target those five generations. That's our goal for us to be a five-generation church and in order to do that, it starts in our own bloodline, in our own family, in our own roof. And then it parallels to this family, this church. I want to show you three cuddly quotes for you Hallmark people. So you can enjoy this. Here's the first one. It says, live every moment, laugh every day, love beyond words. So cuddly. That's like Hallmark. Just... Okay, next one. I'm getting a tear in my eye. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> you know me also well. Okay, having someone to love his family 
having somewhere to go as home, having both is a blessing. And that's so true because all of that, whether it's your bloodline or this, our church family, so important. And then there's one more here. Our family, a circle of strength founded in faith, joy, and love kept by God. And that's so important that God wants to do stuff in our bloodline family, but also in our church family. If you're at a moment in time where you need an injection for your family or for faith, we have, last week I can share this, uh, we have this weekend, is coming weekend is family camp. It's a great place to get away, be secluded. There's, the nature is just incredibly beautiful and the worship and Ben's gonna be there. It's gonna be a phenomenal couple days. If you can get away, if you, especially if you need to, I can't stress enough how awesome it is to build our families and God's bigger family, his eternal family. So today we're going to look at family and, and why it's important. So let me ask you a question. Why is family important to you? If, you? if you were to think about that for a minute, why is family important to you? Depending on your upbringing, you may have different thoughts, conjure up different ideas, good or bad. And in this day and age, in our culture, there's a real push to destroy the family unit. There's a real push to say, I don't need to get married. Here's another one. I don't want to have kids. I don't need to have kids. I'm not going to bring a kid into this world. It's a serious challenge that we deal with. So I'm going to, we're going to break some of this down this morning. We're going to look at three of the reasons why family matters to all of us. Number one is family matters. It's on your outline there. We are all born into a family. We are all born into a family, good or bad. Psalms 127.3 says, children are, listen to this verse. Children are, and parents that are struggling right now with their children, listen to this verse. <laughs> children are a gift from the Lord. It does not say curse. <laughs> they are a reward from him. Do you want to believe Jesus or not? They are a reward, and in this day and age, there is a challenge to that. And we have to decide what we're going to believe. Are we going to believe God, or are we going to believe us? And some, why do you think abortion is happening in our culture? Why do you think abandonment is happening in this culture? Because Satan wants to kill the family unit. He has duped our country and people in the earth, humanity, not just in our country, but in humanity, to believe that children are not a reward. And we are sabotaging the reward God wants to give us by having the wrong attitude and mindset. This is something we have to decide, do I believe God or not? I do. Anybody else? Okay, good, good, good. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have parents? Okay, every time I ask that question, it's 100%. It's amazing. You cannot get away from this. This is something that is across the board with humanity. We all can relate to, and God knows this. Of course, God's plan is for us to be brought up in loving, godly homes, and I was. I was brought up in a loving, godly home. And so when I talk to people, I assume everybody has the same default I had. And then I start to talk to people and counseling, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. You really think inappropriately. <laughs> That's a wrong thought. That's a lie that you have believed somewhere, and you're living it out. We got to get that fixed so that you can believe the truth and live out the truth for your sake and for your children's sake. And that's a lot of the battle that we go through. But I grew up in a Christian home, but I rebelled. For about five years, I got into drugs and everything that goes along into that lifestyle, really dysfunctional and broken. And I got into this band, and we were called Thumper, and we were just loud and <laughs> obnoxious. I was a drummer, and so, of course, I had the coolest drum set in the planet um, because I made it myself out of junk. But it was very unique, to say the least. But we would go, we would rent this garage in this industrial park, and all these friends would come, and we would just party and play music. And then we were all broke. Shock. We were all broke. And so my parents, I don't know why they allowed this, but they let me put my drum set in the basement of their house. 
I do not know how that could be good because I know what I was doing. And so when they would leave during the day or at night or whenever they were gone, I'd call my buddies and I'd say, you guys, come over. Let's jam, man. Let's do rock and roll. So they would come over and we would jam. I mean, it was not a good scene, to say the least, in my parents' house, which I, if you only knew. Anyway, so, so one time I... Call my buddies, come on, come on, it's rock and roll. And they come and we get, and I go to sit behind my drum set, and on each one of my drums and cymbals, there's like this little drop of liquid. And I'm like, what the heck is that? I look at the ceiling, I'm thinking the ceiling's leaking or something. And I touch the liquid and I rub it and I'm like, smell it. Oh, that's anointing oil. <laughs> that's my crazy mama. And I would tell my friends, that's my crazy mom, and I'd wipe it off and, I'd, uh, 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 and I'd pound on the drums. <laughs> my mom knew she was not going to be able to intellectually talk me out of what I was doing. But she knew how to exercise her faith to bring down spiritual principalities, even though at the moment I was not impressed. But we, we have to engage this power of prayer. I can't stress it enough. We can't afford to pray less. We've got to exercise our faith. The devil likes to tell us it does no good. And that's why he tells us that. Because it does a lot of good. That's the first one. We are born into a family. And it relates to all of us. And that kind of leads to number two on your outline of why family matters. It's because we learn and grow in a family. Proverbs 22, 6, bring up a child by teaching him the way he should go, and when he is old, he will never, he won't turn away from it. So there's a part of this is really beautiful because even if you're if you're brought up in a good home, parents, if you brought your children up right and they're not living it, you can be assured that this is they'll come around. Hold on to faith, don't quit praying. Be persistent in prayer, and God will bring it around. He is he he will and, and if you're here and you're like, man, I'm old and I didn't do very well and uh, it's too late for me? No, no, no. It's never too late. It's never too late to become part of his family and get after it. God's got a plan for all of us at whatever age we are. So with that said, I want to in in, uh, invite DeAndre Murray up. So everybody welcome DeAndre Murray up. <clears throat> so some of you know this guy. I got a couple of pictures on Friday night. We were at the park, and I, uh, he was skateboarding, and so... I got a couple of, I think there's three of them. He was just skateboarding, and he's got the helmet with the mohawk on. So I, thought, I snapped a couple of pictures and said, I got I to gotta put these up for everybody to see before we get into all this stuff. Because DeAndre has quite the incredible story. He's not supposed to be walking or talking, which is, you know, we'll get, get on, talk about in a minute here. But tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you like to do in life. And, oh, yeah, there we go. Let's get the green light on. There we go. Okay, like he said, my, my name is DeAndre Murray. Um, I'm from, I attend school at Wilton Elementary. Um, middle school? Yeah, middle <laughs> school. <laughs> Elementary, there's split into half. Okay. Um, I'm 13 years old. Um, like he said, um, yeah. Um, you like sports? I love sports. Um, <laughs> Sorry, he so loves sports. How I attended, I had to qualify for this. Um, so I had to qualify for the uh, for these events. My so before you get into that, so okay. DeAndre, he uh, if you don't know, he, quali he let me read this here. There's yeah. a really cool article. This is in the Washburn newspaper, but he had to qualify. So so he was invited to be part of to represent North Dakota in the G Paralympics. Yeah, Paralympics. And so. But he had to qualify. In, he had to run a 100-meter dash in 41 seconds or less, and he did it in how many? 14 seconds. So to say, yeah. 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 I was thinking maybe the Vikings need to. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the Packers. <laughs> yeah, zinger, zinger. <laughs> okay, wish. so anyway, so he crushed that out of the park, and then he went on, and he – went to Wisconsin, and uh, he, I got some pictures here. This is him in warm-ups, and this, you said this was at your 200? Yep, my 200. And so let's click through these here. There, he won the gold medal. 
There's the North. If you guys were here, yeah. Yeah. You can put the next slide. If you were here about a month ago before he went, we got him up on stage, prayed for him, and then presented him that North Dakota flag. And so he represented us well. And so tell us a little bit about the event and, and uh, what happened while you're there and all that stuff. So the, it's all kids from all around, like Las Vegas, Minnesota, and all them. All um, the nation. The nation. And it's kids with di different disabilities. Um, like they do by, uh, a they'll do by age group, and then they'll do a TF, and I was a TF 37, so there's like different numbers, like TF 38 and all that. Um, and yeah. So you, that was your group, mm -hmm. and so you had to compete with people from people all over the country. Yes, from all and over. And so the what? You, you came home with how many gold medals? Seven gold medals and four new broken records. <laughs> so now you may be thinking, why is that such a big deal? Tell us a little bit about when you were born, what the doctor said. Um, the doctor said I wouldn't be able to walk or talk, and God gave me the opportunity to represent North Dakota in his, uh, the, the Paralympics. And yeah, I mean, I was a small baby. I was only two pounds, two ounces, and that's about there. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the, I I read in this article where mm -hmm. you guys went and brought these to the doctor. What did she say? Oh, the, the she, doctor that said you weren't gonna be able. To she was shocked. She was shocked. Um, in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. Like, I I thought I was gonna put her in tears. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So now, in this article, um, you have a nickname. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your nickname. My mom gave me the nickname Turbo. <laughs> and why did she give you that? Turbo. So er, when I did my when I qualified my, for my 100, I could have beat my I could have beat my 14 seconds. It's just when I sw uh, I slowed down at the close to the line. So then whenever I race. My mom says turbo, and that's when I'm close to the finish line, and then that's when I all kicked it in. So you engage turbo at the end to finish yeah. strong. Okay, yeah. that's good. I like it. So from now on, turbo. That's we'll why sure you. We that's why you see that crazy picture. The of me crazy face of you. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So now you, your faith obviously means a lot to you. Yeah. And in this article, it says you want to be a pastor. So I now, do. why in the world? I, I don't know why anybody would want to be a pastor, let alone you. What? So. <laughs> So every Wednesday, I go to youth group, and Reggie's my pastor. And I've been, Reggie does some of the awesomest preaching I could ever do. Like, I could ever. Reggie. Thank you, Reggie. Okay, uh, now make sure that when you see Reggie, you tell him he's not that good, because you look at him. Like, like, he, I've been watching, I've been watching him ever since the first day. It's like, I, it's made, making me want to be a pastor, and. I want to go to school for it. That's awesome, buddy. So now, your faith in your everyday life, how does that flush out at school? And I, I, would, like, I was at school, like, I don't care what kids think or what they say. Like, as long, like, I don't care what they say or what they say behind my, like, back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. I just think of it as I don't care, and I give out the other ear, and I just ignore it. So you, you Jesus is like your priority, yeah. and if they don't like it, then that's okay, yeah. and then you beat him on the court with your yeah. whatever you're doing. So yeah. <laughs> or we take it out to the track. <laughs> out to yeah. the track. Or <laughs> so now, um, with faith and you wanting to be a pastor, I mean, this is one of the reasons that it's so important for you, you – speak to the kids you serve yeah. in the kids ministry tell us a little bit about that so every sunday i go i help out with the kindergarten and first grade i tell them i uh, read a thing from the bible and i just show them the tell them the love of god and and what it, how does that make you feel and how does that go Te teaching them the love of god on sundays makes my day and I just love seeing the smile on kids' faces. This is why it's so important in this, whether it's our blood family or the church family, for us to be serving. Because, man, the eternal impact is so important for us to be doing. Now, tell me a little bit about your blood family. 
and how important they are to you. I know his, your sister, where'd she go? Is she not in here? She's my, teaching the kids? That's awesome. My sister. She, at the first service, she came up after and she said, she never told you what I did. So tell us, <laughs> tell you so, what. <laughs> yeah, my sister is the love, like, my number one, my number one fan. She. Like, and how old is she? She's t uh, t yeah, 12. She'll be 13 this year. Um, she, every, so every time before my races, she would either tie my shoes. <laughs> yeah, tie my, sh tie my shoes, get me warmed up, say, you got this, you got this big brother, and give me a hug and say, Good job. Let's go. It's and and what happened to this when you were in Wisconsin with your cleat? Oh, uh, my my cleat. Uh, I accidentally cut her. I accidentally cut her with my cleat, and and she still supported you. Yeah, she still supported me. So how about fa how about parents? How do they support you? family? I give my mom and my dad all of this. Like I wouldn't be able to do this without their support and all their help. Like, they had to spend a little. Not a little bit of money is how we put a, it in the person. Not, <laughs> it's been a, not a little bit of money. A lot of money, I would say, on me. I mean, don't want to say how much, <laughs> but yeah. It's so important in our families yeah. to, to love each other and support each other, and they have done that for you, and we're super excited about and he brought his medal so if you, after the after the service if you want to come and see his bling and uh his his uh plaque he would love to do that um i know tonight now there's going to be a special they're going to be doing a story on you yep. on kfyr yep so everybody google or i don't know how whatever you do to <laughs> figure it out hey, where how smart. do you watch that yeah it's probably six o'clock or ten o'clock kfyr and it's going to be great we're going to try to get it dvr'd and recorded and yeah. we'll play it back here but we're super excited about what god's doing and the platform he's given you and that especially that you're willing to use it to glorify jesus and to to uh not just for yourself so anything yeah. else you want to leave with us before we pray for you i'm ha i'm happy i was ha i'm happy to do this for you guys and thank you all for the support and yeah. That's awesome. So as he, you know, this is, as a somebody who wants to be a pastor, he, you know, he, he gets nervous up here, but that's normal. And that's part of the practice. And so I'm super glad that he was willing to come up here and practice because that's going to benefit him. I know you're going to, well, with the youth group, you're going to get to share back there and do some cool stuff. So we just are pumped for you and excited and are grateful that you're taking a step of faith and going for it. And so we want to pray for you. So would you guys extend your hand out to DeAndre? We're going to pray for him. God, we are just are grateful for this life um, that at the beginning of his life, there was a word spoken over him, even a curse. He might not speak and won't walk. But you are in the business of turning bad things around for good. So we're grateful for that. We're excited for what you've done in him, what you're doing him, and especially what you're going to do. We pray that you will continually fill him with your spirit to overflowing. Give him courage to be bold and courageous to speak the truth in love. And uh, Lord, as he goes forward, we pray that you will straighten the paths that need to be straightened, level the mountains, give him favor, open doors that need to be opened, shut doors that need to be shut. And Lord, we just, again, we all as a church family just agree together with him and for him, and we're excited to watch it unfold, and we love you, and we thank you in advance again, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody give it up for DeAndre. Give me a hug, Mike. Got it? Cool. You want to take this, too? All right, so after service, he'll be down front. Come and make sure you give him a high five and, a, and a say good job, Turbo, and uh, encourage him as he kind of goes forward. In your life now, as you hear De DeAndre's story, um, you may be thinking, "Well, that's really great and fine, but I—that's not my life. My life's bad. It's horrible. Problems." There's a saying that they said at the Global Leadership Summit these last Thursday and Friday. If you were there, you know it was awesome. But there's a saying that is so true: "Is when's the best time to plant an oak tree? 25 years ago or today?" So it's never too late to stay to, to start 
God has a plan. He wants to use us all. And the reason is, is number three in your outline, that family matters, is because we all reproduce a family. It's so important for us to apply God's plan for our life so that we can have what God intends for us. So because we all reproduce a family. Look at this verse under number three. It's Proverbs 17, 6. It says, grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Parents are the pride of their children. And all grandparents said, amen. I know, cha-ching. <laughs> It's so funny. I'm not a grandparent, but uh, I, I talked to a lot of grandparents, mine, my own as well, and my parents as grandparents, and it's just amazing to think um, how cool that is and how true that verse is. God wants to invite us all into this. To close here, family is supposed to, our blood family is supposed to remind us of our eternal family. Look at this verse in Ephesians chapter 1. For he has chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. He is inviting us into his eternal family and our blood families are supposed to represent what it means to be in an eternal family. And it's good and it's bad. This is why it's so important to stay close to Jesus and apply what he says to believe what he says, to know the truths of the scripture so that we can live it out and stand firm in prayer and watch him be faithful. Look at this verse in Ephesians chapter 5. Throughout the scriptures, God is constantly paralleling blood families with his church family, the eternal family. In Ephesians chapter 5, it says, for we are members of his body. And then he says, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's talking about the blood family. But then look what he says. This is the Apostle Paul. It says, this is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Even though I'm addressing the blood family, I am actually talking about something that is much bigger, the eternal family. We are supposed to love and support and encourage each other. This is throughout scripture, God's plan is for us in a blood family to be, remember that this is just a, a, a facsimile or a, a prof prophetic picture of the eternal family that he wants us all to be a part of. That's why Connect, Grow, Serve, Deploy, our, our mission, Connect, Grow, Serve, Deploy is so important. It's, you see it in a family. You connect with your spouse. You have children. You grow, you serve one another, and then you, the goal is when their children are old enough that they d are deployed and they do it right themselves. And they have good families. This is God's plan. This is the church plan, but it's also the bloodline family plan that God has for all of us. If you're here this morning and you're saying, man, I have not done that very well. That's okay. Again, you can start now. And the best way to start is through prayer. You may know how to do it, but don't have the unction. Prayer will give you the unction. You may not know how to do it. God will give the wisdom. But it all starts with prayer. There's going to be a prayer team right over here. And it's every Sunday they're there. The longest walk can be from those chairs to prayer, that prayer team. Don't miss that. If you need prayer, access it. If you're like, I don't know how to do this. What is my next steps? Right over here, there's a next steps booth. They will love to help you get some next steps. Maybe it's parenting, or maybe it's communication, or maybe it's finances, or maybe it's whatever. There's next steps. It's never helpless. It's never hopeless. We just have to access what God thinks about these things and then apply for the next steps. Or if you want to sit down with a pastor, we have a phenomenal pastoral care team. They'll walk you through things. They're great listeners, and they'll help you move in the direction that God wants and has designed for us, and the way he created us. So you can go online for all this stuff, and but for pastoral care, you can click pastoral care button and and set up an appointment. And then lastly is in the family, it's not right if I have five kids. If, if my kids are part of my family, they are all going to have chores. It's not fair if I say to one of them, oh, you don't have to do chores. The other, chores, the other four will take, pick up the slack for you. It's not right. And in the church family, it's the same way. Maybe it's time for you to step up and start serving somewhere, and you know it. And maybe not. But maybe you're like, you know what? I have got to get plugged in somewhere and do my chores. Where am I going to serve? DeAndre, his sister, they're serving in kids' ministry. There's a ton of places for you to get involved in. And God wants to help and will help. So you can go online, click the serve button. We'll help connect you to something. It could be if you're talented in singing or music or tech or whatever. 
we will help you connect the dots on that. Because God wants us, the last line here, God desires for all, us to, all of us to be an intimate part of his family, not just to be an observer. So with that said, we're going to pray over our connect cards. And uh, we do this every Sunday if you're new. Because we, again, believe in this power of prayer. And some things, sometimes things are out of our control. And sometimes we just, there's, there's a block. And the only way that we can get through and break through is through the power of prayer. So would you guys extend your hands and we're going to pray over these connect cards. <coughs> God, we come to you and as we think about family and how it matters. Because we're all born into a family. We all learn and grow in a family and we all reproduce a family. And in the middle of that beauty, there's brokenness. And there's challenges. And we're so grateful that you haven't left us helpless or hopeless. You are with us. You give us tools to be able to deal with the stuff that we come up against. You give us the wisdom, the power of your spirit, and this weapon, this tool called prayer, so that we aren't hopeless and helpless. So God, we agree together as a church family for every one of these connect cards to represent personal issues, health issues, family issues, relational issues, financial issues, just all whatever issues. And we're grateful that we have a Father in heaven who is limitless in his power, that we can bring these cares to you and lay them at your feet and trust you with them. So God, that's what we do. We agree together. We pray over every one of these cards. We, would you manifest yourself in supernatural ways? So often these ways are, again, out of our control. So God, we give them to you and to your control. And we trust you with them. We even thank you in advance, God, for these hardships that you're going to turn it around for your glory. We commit it to you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, so let's stand together. We're going to close with our series verse. Just a reminder, camp, if you want to go, you're still cha uh, there's still time. And then DeAndre will be right down front. Make sure you come and give him a high five and a hug and give him some turbo love. And uh, that's an old song, by the way, for you 80s rocker. Okay, shh. It need that much. Okay, so, okay, you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, okay. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7. God bless you guys. Have a great week.